I guess this is why they call it X-Step. Hey everyone, Matt here from Doctors of Running, and today we're going to do a review of the XStep 160X 2.0. Previously, we reviewed the version 1 last year and uh, had a little bit of uh, trouble with that because I was ordering it over from China, didn't really know how the sizing was going to go, I ended up getting something that was probably a 9.5, but I didn't know that, sent to David, he loved it, fit him, so it was probably 9.5. Now, XStep has their own website uh, for the US, and I ordered a solid 10, and this thing fits very true to size, if not slightly long. So, if you want to go, if you want to look at that available in the United States, you have to go, don't have to go looking through Chinese websites or trying to use a Google Translate anymore. It's all in English. So, if you're interested in that, much easier to get and much more true to size. Before we get into fit, um, I just want to talk about some of the specs and the specs that we really we don't know very much about. So, at least I don't. Uh, if anybody does know, please let me know. I've measured these on my scale in a size 10 at 8.5 ounces, which is 0.1 ounce heavier than last year. That's really statistically the same thing. So that's not really that significant. Um, definitely a much, for me, more comfortable than last year, but we'll talk about some of the things that you know make it good, make it not so good. So let's talk first a little bit about the shoe. Again, this is from XStep, which is a Chinese company. I always like seeing what's going on in the world because different places of the world have different shoes available to them. So the United States has different shoes compared to a little bit Europe, but definitely over in the Asian market like Japan, for, for sure there are shoes that are sold in good amounts over there. Mizuno, Asics, lots of companies will have shoes that go over there, but they don't sell them in the United States because US people may not be interested in them and vice versa. The Chinese market is also interesting because there's a lot of Chinese specific country, or not countries, companies that are starting to debut their own racing shoes and footwear. And at first I was like, uh, but I'm starting to see some things that are really interested, interesting me, interest, getting me interested. I can't talk. And yeah, this is one of the ones where we, I checked out last year and I'm like, okay, this is interesting. And so I wanted to see what they were doing with version two. There is another version of this that's available, I believe, to people. I've seen it pop up to people that live in the Philippines. So there's an XStep X160X one, X Pro, which is more max stack height than this. So this shoe, I the stack height is more similar to like a traditional trainer, right? It's not crazy. It's not super low to the ground, but it's kind of in that mid range. I don't know what the stack height numbers are. I don't, you know, I don't want to know what the heel drop is. But we'll talk about that. But it's definitely not a like super maximum stack height shoe throughout the whole thing. It's, I'd say it's more traditional with a little extra room here. Do know that this midsole comes up around the heel. So it's not actually that high. We'll talk about the midsole in just a second. Let's start with the fit. So that was a little introduction about the shoe. Fit is much better for me than the last version. That's probably because I actually got the right size because I could see what I was doing. It's, it's snug through the heel and the midfoot as I would expect a racing shoe to be. Four foot's also a little snug, but it just opens a little bit more, which is nice. So expect more of a racing style fit with just a hair more room for long distances. There is a toe guard. It is nice and flexible though. So it didn't give me any trouble. I would not wear the sockless just because the liner is a little scratchy, right? But it's nice and airy. So just put some socks on. You'll be fine. Length again, fits me true to size. It did fit slightly long, but something I appreciate because I have been using this also is a very lightweight, is a lightweight trainer. So the slightly long fit gives my feet a little bit of room to swell, which is nice, but don't expect like a super short fit. Um, I would still go true to size though, especially with some of like the toe spring here. There is a heel counter in the rear foot. It is more flexible. So I really didn't have too much of a problem. There's some decent cushioning through here. It was fine, really didn't bother me. The tongue is a little bit thin and it could slide a little bit. It's, it's not, it's not gusted at all, but for the most part, it's fine. What I would expect from a racing shoe and laces are fine, but nothing crazy to write home about. They do their job. They lock this in. Um, didn't have to overly tighten it because it's already a little bit snug, but I also didn't have to lace lock it at all because the heel counter, the way the shoe's set up the snug fit, it's secure. I didn't have any heel slippage. That was really, really nice. So overall upper is what I would kind of associate with a lightweight trainer. It's a little bit more snug. 
Um, there's still some room enough. There's some length there that you can handle this for longer training days. It's still secure though. Not really a big problem. People who have very wide, wide feet, you might have a little bit of trouble. I can't remember off the top of my head if they have wides on the website. I don't think they do, but somebody will have to check me on that. But the fit is actually pretty, pretty good. So nothing to write home about, nothing crazy, but it does the job. And that's really, really nice. Moving on to the midsole and the sole. This is where things get interesting. One of the things that my, the positive about this shoe is that it does use a, what we would consider a super foam. So it's using um, Piba foam and it's both says on the website and it's got that marked nicely right there for PB. So this is theoretically going to be similar to Saucony's Power Run PB, although it just rides a little bit different. It does remind me of a lower stack um, endorphin speed actually is what I would equate this most to because well, the plate is is somewhat stiff but as you can see there's still a decent amount of flexibility mostly because it's not a full length plate it is an x-shaped plate where it comes up a little bit here and then crosses at the middle and there's two prongs that come out they're a little thicker than last year um if you want the full length plate again check out the xstep 160x pro because that is a full length this one does not it spreads out a little bit which adds to stability but not necessarily to stiffness because it's still a good amount of flexibility here um, the trouble with that plate and the way they design the soles, and there's been a couple of companies that are doing this. You see this elevation here. Well, the, for whatever reason, because they took the amount of midsole out here, which does lessen the weight. Unfortunately, there's a flex point that's right in the middle of the midfoot, which you don't want that to flex there. So people that have sensitive plantar fascia or sensitive midfoot joints, this is not going to be a great shoe for you for using as a trainer. When you pick up the speed pick up speed. It's less of a problem, but I definitely noticed this on warm up and some of the runs I've done where I'm coming down slower and it flexes right there at the midfoot. You don't want that. Even though this is where the plate is the thickest, this is my big problem with like trusting systems and stuff like that. You need to fill this in. So X step, please fill this in and make this a full rocker. There's really not a good reason to have this here um, because you're just creating a flex point and that's going to get, that may or may not get worse as the shoe breaks in. The, the four, I've got 70 miles. It hasn't gotten worse on it. So the forefoot has some more stiffness to it, which is nice when you toe off um, the heel. This is such a massive heel bevel. This could be, it's, it's fairly smooth. It's a little clunky when you first break the shoe in, but after that, it, it does its job and rolls it down. I wish this would be a little bit more smooth. It can be a little aggressive, which is nice when you're running fast, not so nice when you're running slow, but this is really meant to be a speed shoe. Toe spring is nice. Again, there's still some flexibility, so it's not rigid. So people that like a little more flexibility will do better in this shoe. And we know that not everybody does well with a super stiff uh, ride. The plates really stiff in the sole up. Some people do well in a super stiff shoe, other people do not. So people that need a little more flexibility will definitely find this shoe to work very, very well for them. That's also a reason I was able to use it as a daily trainer and why I have so many miles on it. It's just, it was comfortable doing that. It didn't feel like I was trying to get over a plate all the time, even though there is a plate in here, it's just less aggressive. So use-wise, this shoe is best for tempo runs. It's where this thing comes alive. It's where the pace picks up. Again, a little too flexible in for me to use for super speed workouts. I don't know what I'm using super speed workouts. When I say things like doing track workouts or trying to do like really fast farlex or fast stuff, it's really not the best. It's best for temple runs, long runs. We're trying to keep the pace up. So this would be really, really good shoe for a lot of people for like, you know, maybe a 10 K just because it's not so maximal. For me, this is a shoe I would use for a half marathon. It's really good and it feels good at that consistent tempo pace. It just comes alive. There is enough cushioning for me to be able to use this as a daily trainer. And I have for many, many, many runs and it's really comfortable. Yes, it took me a while to get used to this. I luckily didn't have any problems with it, but there's plenty of cushioning and I paid full price for this, by the way. So I'm like, I'm going to get my miles out of it. Plenty of cushioning underneath here. And it feels like a lightweight trainer, which is what I like training in. Uh, durability, this shoe is phenomenal, right? This, this stuff, the grip is really good. And at 70 miles, let's see where, oh, there's my, my left shoe. Like this is barely anywhere here. So if you're looking for a shoe that you can get a lot of miles on, this is great. The durability is phenomenal. Even with the split sole, the traction is really good. I've used this on trails without any issue. Probably wouldn't use it on aggressive trails. I wouldn't want to get a rock stuck here. Probably not the most aggressive lugs. 
but there's plenty of traction for, for uh, and durability for use on trails. And I haven't had any issues. So very, really good on that front. The ride, like I said, is a little bit firmer. The Piba, the Piba foam does need to break in a little bit. Once it relaxes just a teeny bit, it feels better. But tempo runs are where this feel best. If you're looking to get a consistent ride that's going to keep you moving at a decent clip, this is it. Just don't expect it to be able to really be aggressive. Like I would not use this for a 5K. This is not something I would use. But for 10K and up, that would be a shoe I would definitely consider um, if it wasn't for this. But I've done plenty of longer tempo runs and this did not have any issue. So anyway, in terms of stability, this shoe is actually pretty good. So like the last version, there's a little piece that extends up right here. And you can actually feel the edge of the plate right here. So it extends out to the medial side a little bit. There are the midsole comes up and around the heel, which is really nice. The heel counter comes forward a pretty decent amount. It's a really nice stable heel, uh, plus a ton of flare medially and laterally. So a lot of, a lot of stuff that's going to keep you guided at the heel. The yes, this does you know, flex a little bit more at that midfoot, but then the plate comes out um, on the medial and lateral side. So it really guides you down the middle. So there's a lot of really good methods of subtle stability here that do a great job. It's one of the reasons I was able to run, uh, do daily training in this shoe. So those people that want mild stability, this is actually going to be a good consideration. Just know you got to break it in a little bit. Again, thoughts of the DPT, it's just this, right? We, everything else is really good. I love the split plate design because it not only creates snappiness and still allows some flexibility without being too loose or too aggressive, but it just helps guide you and provides a little bit of guidance down the middle. I, I like the lateral flare here that's not overdone. And then the, mids, the midsole comes up around the heel. I think that was done really well. It's just this, it, we, you know, X step, you cannot be doing this for people that have sensitivities at the midfoot because there's no joint here at the, ooh, I just heard something crack. There's no joint here in the midfoot that does that. All the joints there are more in this plane of motion. Actually, technically they're like diagonally in different directions, but there's nothing in the front, in the sagittal plane here that flexes like that. So you don't want that. And especially for a shoe, where like long distance, we want to be efficient. If you're going to do this, you need to have a full rocker. There's no point to have what looks like a double rocker here because you're just going to hit something that could potentially slow you down and lose efficiency. So I would say fill this thing in. And yeah, I know it's cool to have the logo on the bottom and it's definitely good marketing, but I would fill that in and do something else with it because this splitting is going and like, especially if this wears out and I've, like I said, it, it hasn't worn out for me yet, but this is just not something that you want. And I think you would make the shoe more versatile for like a lot more people if you filled this in. So that's really my only gripe. Everything else is really good. I like the way the upper is. It's very breathable. Um, the toe guard is there without being overly aggressive. I haven't had any blistering. So outside, that's really my only recommendation is just fill that in. It'll make the shoe more rocker. It will make it more efficient over longer distances. The other thing I might do is maybe soften the durometer of the P bud just a little bit. It's a little firm. I like that, but I think a lot of people aren't, especially X step. If you're trying to advertise to the U S market, you just might want to make it just a hair softer. I like it because I'm weird and I like, I like slightly firmer shoes, but for a lot of the U S market, just make it a touch softer and you're more likely to get people to catch on with the, the initial comfort. Cause that's what people, a lot of runners and a lot of people that are buying shoes, not just running, um, we'll look for that initial step and feel. Yes. That's why I always tell people don't go buy that because you need to go break it in. But that's one reason people are going to buy it is does it feel comfortable the second you put it on your foot and it, it can be a little firm on step in. So that's really the only thing I would change, but I'm really impressed. The upper has definitely been refined. I like this more than the knit. It's more secure. I haven't had any issues with that. I like what they've done with some of the additional methods of stability. Um, this does feel, I don't know if it actually is, but it just feels like the, the design is a little bit smoother than the last time. It feels like it can actually get some better workouts out of the shoe. And again, just temple runs felt so good. So my, my, this shoe would be really good for somebody looking for a 10 K to half marathon shoe, maybe marathon. If you want a plated super foam shoe, that's not necessarily a super max cushion shoe. So not max stack height. So there are more options. I have to say, I am impressed with X step, I'm, I'm excited to see what companies in China are doing because I think the more competitors we have, the more product that you're putting out, the more it just pushes innovation and making things better. Just make sure again that you're 
making things anatomically the correct way. So yeah, that's review of the XF 160X 2.0. I will have a full written review out. I got to, to see if uh, David wants to test these out because they are now fitting. They're going to fit him a little long. So we'll see if we can get this over to him and see what he thinks. But yeah, very good shoe. More traditional stack height for a marathon racer, not maximal, although it's, there's a decent amount of foam here. But you're getting that Piba and a unique carbon fiber plate in there that's going to be a little bit more flexible and a nice upper that is really streamlined. And yeah, it's really good. A lot of people are going to be interested in the shoe. And if you're interested in something for China, this is something I would test out, um, especially because there is a US website that XF has set up. So yeah, that's the, again, review of the XF 160X 2.0. Stick around. We're going to have lots of cool stuff. As always, we got lots of cute, cool interviews coming up. We have lots of cool content coming up on all the different social media sites. So stick around, check us out. And isn't this cool? It's two different colors. Anyway, all right, bye.